Welcome everyone to our by Bidel once again. This is Beth and we are going to work in Christmas journals. I have three of them that I'm working on and today I want to make a belly band in each one of them but I want to do three different belly bands. I'm going to work on this page here so I'll take these ones and set them aside and I like to open them up so that they're flat when I work on them. And I have some of this ribbon that I want to make a belly band out of a, out of this ribbon today. So I'm gonna cut a piece, usually cut it just a little extra long, and then I can trim it down to where I want it. And then I want to layer onto that ribbon before I add it to my page, a little extra. So let's see if we can find some lace. All right, so I have some of this, and we can put this either on top or behind. And I'm thinking I'm gonna put it on top so that I can see the pattern of the lace. So let's cut a piece of that. And then I have some of this trim that I'd also like to add to it. So I'll put that like that, looks good. And then I'm gonna put this along just one side of it. And I'm gonna put these together with just a little bit of glue and then I'm gonna go stitch them to make sure they stay that way. So let's move that paper so that we don't get glue where we don't want it right now. We're going to use the Fabric Tech. I have Fabric Fusion. It's pretty much the same thing, I think. And just put a line of that right down on our ribbon. Add our lace on top, centering that red ribbon behind it. That did nothing. <laughs> Let's do a little bit more. I think our glue went right on through to the paper underneath. Now I can feel it. All right, and then right along this side, I'm going to add another little stream of glue and add this trim. There, I think that makes a pretty belly band. Nice, simple, easy. Now, you don't have to stitch this. Your glue will hold it. You want to make sure, though, that your glue is dry before you go adding it to your page. Now, we need a little bit more glue. That's not gonna stick. So I guess I won't be sewing this right away. I've got more glue on there than I wanted. There we go. So I'm just going to lift this up and set this aside to dry. And then when it's dry, I'll take it over to my sewing machine and stitch that on so it doesn't fall apart. Meanwhile, we will set that page aside also. And we will start our second belly band in our second signature. And let's see, in this one, where do we want a belly band? I don't want to hide that tree, so I'm not going to put it there. We can put it on this page. We'll set the signature aside. Now for this one, I wanna make it out of some of that paper I made yesterday. That piece is not big enough. So we want to add like maybe, let's go with a two inch strip. So I'll go cut me off a two inch strip. Now, as if you've been following and you watched yesterday's video, you'll see this is muted and that's because I went over top of it with a layer of gesso. I'm I'm going to even up that side also. There we go. Let's add a little bit of ink to the edges of this. And then let's dress this up a little bit. We could dress this up with the same lace. And then we do have some angels for this journal. And I think maybe we'll just put an angel on top of this belly band, just like that. How about a little label? That would be nice if we ink up the edges. And I will list down below in the video information whose digitals these are. What I didn't do yet for this journal is I've been gathering things like laces and trims. I gathered those up. I gathered up some papers to make my collage papers. I didn't add, gather up any extra papers for my extra collage, so I need to do that. I do know I'm gonna add these numbers from this check stub. Let's put that right in behind like this. There, I'm happy with the way that looks. So we'll glue, glue this down, set the page aside. A stream of glue right down through the center and put the lace right down through the center. And then the next thing that we wanna put on is our check stub paper here. And for the lady, let's just add some art glitter glue just because it's easier to get it around all the outside edges because of the fine tip. Glue down, 
So you guys thinking of Christmas yet? Is it too soon for you? I mean, Thanksgiving isn't even here yet. I like to have my Thanksgiving or have my Christmas shopping done before Thanksgiving. Does it always happen? No, it doesn't always happen. I try. That way, then it's done and I can concentrate on any family things that come along or cookie bacon, you know, all that cooking, cooking that we do and different things like that, the decorating. And of course, now the working, the making the journals. I, I, this is my second Christmas, the Art by Bedell Small Business. So that's pretty cool that that much time has gone by already. Wow. So there we have a really cute little belly band for this page. And it's going to need sewn on just like that. That's cute, right? Then I'm going to take it over and I'm going to, let's see, do I have to sew down through the middle? Maybe I don't want to sew down through the middle. So I'm just going to sew along the top and the bottom and then we'll figure out what we're going to put in this. So be right back. There she is. She's so cute. Let's see. What shall we add? Now, we could make a tag out of this. I think that's what we'll do. This is just a piece of the master board that I made. And we'll set that aside. Let's ink up the edges and put our lines on the back. There. Now, let's take our poinsettia stamp and put a little on the back, one on the back, with our fired brick distress ink. We go and then on the front we'll add like a couple to our front three I guess and then I want to take it and I want to add with the bigger one some in modeling paste now this is going to take a while to dry so after I get the modeling paste on I'll set it aside and the paste that I'm using is Master's Touch. I, I'm happy with this. I think it's a nice consistency. And I, this is a Tim Holtz Sampers Anonymous collection of stencils. I'm just going to add some paste right along here. Wipe off the excess. Lift it up. Oh my gosh, how pretty is that? Do we want two on there? I think we'll have a partial one down here also. Yes, 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 yes. I'm gonna set that aside to dry and wash my stencil off. I don't want this to harden on my stencil. All right, so we're gonna work on our third belly band while we're waiting for the tag to dry and the glue to dry on the ribbon strip. And again, I don't want to put it on that one. That's too pretty to cover up. And we could add one here. Not that this isn't pretty, but it's got some bare spots, so it could use a little, little bit more to it. We'll open this up. And over here, what I'd like to build for this one is a, I call them a three-quarter belly band. You can call them whatever you want. <laughs> Let's see. I want to make it out of something different. So let's make it out of, we'll start with a piece of the, the bank um, stub, check stub. Go about that wide with it. Let's cut off some of this on this edge. And then ink that piece up, put it right there. And then add some of the paper. We have some of this pretty poinsettia paper that we used in our master board. And I think that would be really nice on top of there. And then we'll ink that up also. Like that. And then for a focal point, I have this little angel that is a stamp and then this button. So let's ink up around those. And these are fussy cuts from a uh, digital. And like I say, I'll list all the digitals down below. And so isn't the button. And then we should have some lace under here. Agree? Do we agree? So let's put the lace on top of the ledger or the check stub. And then put our poinsettia on top of that. And then our angel and our button. Makes a cute little belly band, right? Glue this all down. This glue, the fabric glue, takes so long to dry it seems like. 
put down our lace. So another draw to this, this paper, this check stub, is not just the numbers on it, although to me, that's what I like the best, but it's also the color of it. I just, there's something about that yellow that seems to blend with everything in my eyes, anyhow. There we put our poinsettia down. And this points, or this journal is kind of, but not really, <laughs> steering toward the poinsettia and the angels. But there's going to be other things added in on this also. It's not going to strictly just stay to those two things. And the colors are red and green and gold. It's our little button. So this pretty much is nothing other than a snippet that we're building here. But instead of just adding it to a page and just calling it a snippet, we're going to make it into a belly band. Only it's, like I say, a three-quarter belly band where I'm going to sew on this side and this side, and then we'll build a tag for down in side there. So I am going to take this over and stitch it on and then be back. All right, we have our belly band on our page, and I also did a straight stitch around the outside of the stamp. Now to build the tag for down inside there, I want it to be, let's say maybe two and a half inches. I'll go cut a strip. And let's see if it fits. It fits, but I don't want it that big, that tall. So I'm going to just go up to here. That's about how tall I want it. And cut that off. We'll save this for another project. And we'll ink up around the edge and put our journaling lines on the back. We will add some of our stencil to this. Back and front. Now I'm thinking that I like so much how the texture paste looked with the poinsettia stencil on these cards. So I think for the rest of them, I will just take my sheets and I will just add that to it and let it dry so that when we want to use a piece, we already have that done and don't have to wait for it to dry. This one, we're gonna bypass it. So that's gonna go in there like that, but it needs a little bit of decoration on it. So I kind of like this script stamp, script paper, and I'm gonna add a piece of that to it, inking up the edges, of course, and maybe some green. Let's get some green on here. I have some of this pretty green here. And of course, our either ledger paper or our check stub. Kind of like that. And then we're going to find a focal point. How about a bow with some holly and a label? We'll tuck a ticket down in here, just like that. I think that's cute. So let's ink up around the edge of our label and our bow. Yesterday, I was starting to work on a page in the journal and I, I got, I call it being frozen. I just was kind of sitting here looking at it and thinking, I don't know what to do. Well, then I thought, okay, if you don't know what to do, there's an issue. Either you have like a block where you just need to take a break for a while, which I cannot afford to do, or you don't have the right supplies. As it ended up, I just didn't have anything that I could use for uh, focal points. I didn't have any Christmas stickers. I didn't, I just didn't have anything. I didn't have any die cuts. I didn't have any water, sketched watercolor things. And to do to do the sketched watercolor things takes a long time and I want these journals to be done, you know, rather quickly. So that was that was not an option. Stickers, I would have to drive an hour to go get some stickers and they can be rather expensive when you're doing three journals. So that truly was not an option either. And the die cuts, of course, they're even more expensive than stickers. And then I'm like, girl, 
just get some digitals. Please, just get some digital. So I went online, went to Etsy, and found these awesome digitals. I think I like ordered from four different people some different designs and stuff, and I, I will get them listed who they are. And so then this morning, or this, yeah, this morning I got up and I'm like, okay, we can do this. We have stuff to work with. When you don't have anything to work with or what you want to work with, it can cause a block, and you're just like, get up and walk away or figure it out or something but yeah it does cause a block okay so these are just a little bit dull to me and it's probably because i muted down the background but i needed to mute down the background so that when i added the foreground items they stood out otherwise everything was just going to like blend in like a melting pot together in order to make these a little bit brighter Let's take some, some gesso. And what I need to do actually is make a little container for this kit, so I'll be right back. All right, to make my splatters, I am going to take some gesso. I have this little container and I'm gonna add a water in it to water this down a little bit. You can use water, you can use like some extenders, some acrylic extender or whatever you want to use to water this down or to, yeah, to make it so it's not as thick. All right, I'm just gonna use the end of my paintbrush to stir this up. Make it like a milky consistency. You don't wanna water it down too much or it will just, when you splatter, it'll just fade away and then you won't see it. So there we go with that. Now, splatters tend to get everywhere. You can make yourself a box for your splatters, which is what I've done. But for showing you what I'm doing here, I'm going to bypass the box and hope that I don't get this all over. So I want to water down my brush and I'm just going to dip it into my paint and splatter like that. And look at that. I think that brightens that up some. Now, if that's not enough for us, we can take some of our gold ink, which is our copper plate gold, Dr. Phil Martin's Iridescent Doc Copper Plate Gold Ink. Get it mixed up here and put some in our container. Add a dab or two of water, maybe not, maybe not. This is pretty runny, it's ink. Let's take this brush and dab it in and see if it splatters all right. It splatters great. There we go, guys. So now we have gold and white splatters, and I like the looks of that. And then this needs to dry before we can put it down inside, and I need to wash my brush so that doesn't stiffen up on me. Now I am gonna add some splatters to the first one we did also. Staying away from our little angel's face here. And some white ones. Again, staying away from her face. There we go. And some splatters to this. Once I start like adding something like this, I feel I need to add it to the whole journal. So hopefully I will remember as I'm making each element for the journals to add my splatters to every project. Otherwise I can go in and add them at the end. There we go. So we'll let all that dry and be back. I have um, stitched this ribbon belly band on top and bottom and now I'm going to make a journal card to go inside so I've taken a piece of our master board and cut it to the size that I want for in there and that size is it measures four and a half by six and a quarter and this is on a a4 size page and then I think for the focal point, we're gonna add this little girl with the bunny and the poinsettia, <laughs> she's so sweet. Now, for the back of this, I can add a little dimension to it because we have a little bit of give in the fabric, um, the ribbon belly band, which really can't be gotten away from. I pulled it tight, and when you have something that's gonna give like the ribbon, there's not a whole lot you can do. So anyhow, we can add some dimension to this, a little bit of dimension to this. I think we'll start with adding some ledger paper. Find a piece of ledger paper. I have some here. And this is the real deal, guys. I was gifted, if you've been watching my videos, you already know, 
all of this ledger paper, like five books of ledger paper. And so I intend on actually using it. <laughs> Let's get this cut down to size here. There we go. Save those scraps and ink up around the edges of it. And this paper dates back to 87. Well, it's not extremely old. And with the print and the numbers all around it, that just looks awesome. Let's add a little bit of poinsettia paper to our collage. Or wait a second, let's add some, I want to go with some lace. And a little bit of the poinsettia paper in there. She could be like this. And then we have labels. Let's add a green one. And ink up around that. And then how about a little more texture to it? So we're going to go with cheesecloth. Cut a strip of cheesecloth here. And I want to add that to our project. There we go. That looks pretty cool. Then with our poinsettia paper on top of that, which we did not ink up around yet. There we go. Our little angel and our label, which we don't want to hide the bunny. So we're going to put the label right down here and we're going to put the angel up a little bit higher. The little sweetheart that she is. It's like that. And then we'll put this down here. What do you think? Do you think it's enough, guys? I think by the time we spackle it, speckle it, it'll be fine. So let's get this all glued down. Our glitter glue, get around all the edges of this paper. Attach this with our fabric fusion. A bit of glue for the cheesecloth. And then our poinsettia paper. Our angel. And our label. How cute is that? I'm going to leave the um, cheesecloth hanging off the side. And I'm going to go stitch around the edge of this. And probably around the tag also. I'll be right back. All right, so it's been stitched around, and I want to add a tab to the top here. So to make a tab, I usually just add scraps of paper, use scraps of paper. And that's what I'm going to do today. I have this piece of ledger paper, and let's see, I think I want to put, I'm going to put it on the top edge right here. Although, yeah, I'm going to put it on the top edge just because that's where I like it. A little bit of this red paper over the top of it also. How about a piece of lace? Yes, let's do some lace. Just a piece. And then we'll just staple that on. First, we better edge up our ledger paper. And then get our stapler. Get all of our pieces back together here. I think I want the lace over top. And put it down on our card like this, a little bit up from the top. And I'm gonna add two staples to make sure that it stays in place. I don't like that showing through, so we'll rip that off and add some ink to that area. There we go, that's better, Cheddar. So that's really cute. Let's add some splatters. I think that's enough. Of the white splatters let's add some gold splatters there and that's enough of those very very nice wash my brushes and then we'll set that aside to dry also so that's going to go inside this belly band so we'll just set that on top there and put that aside then for this belly band let's turn our paper over looks like they're dry these are not quite dry. This one is going to go on here, and I also want to add a page tab up to the top. So again, we'll use some more ledger paper. This one doesn't have any writing on it, but it's okay. Ink up around the edge of that, and then add some, let's add some green paper to this one, and a piece of lace. So we have our ledger paper, our green paper and I off stack them. I don't just, and you can, you can just stack them right on top of here. 
I like to set them off like that. And then I like to put the lace kind of over the both of them like that. And then I will take this and slide it down on my tag like that, being careful not to ruin my wet splatters. And I could add an eyelet at this point. I can staple it. I can sew it. it it's totally up to you. Stapling is obviously faster. You could even just glue them on if you like. But there's that tag that's going to go with the three-quarter belly band like this. And then we need something to go inside here. Now, a lot of time when I make a belly band on a printed piece of paper or a piece of paper that I have designed with my mixed media techniques, and I feel I have taken away some journaling space, I'll add a piece of coffee stain copy paper. That way it gives journaling space. Before we do this, let's take our stencil and our fired brick and add some poinsettias to our paper. Front and back. How pretty that fired brick looks on this coffee stain copy paper. And then we'll ink up around the edges of this. And we don't have to use vintage photo on this. I mean, a green or a red would be pretty for the edges to be all inked up. But I've started with this, so I'm going to finish with this. All right, so I will fold that. If I fold it in half, it's going to be too tall. If I fold it in half this way, we're just gonna have to quarter it. That will slide back inside there. Now let's see how our tag's coming along. It's still pretty wet. So we're gonna have to um, hold off for an hour or so before we finish this. When this does dry, I will be back to finish and show you everything all put together. All right, everything has dried. Let me show you where we are. We have this one done. We have all the speckles on it and the tag is made, the belly band's made. So that's the way that one will look. That's the three quarter belly band. And we'll take it and we'll put it over our signatures like this. So let's set that one aside. Then we have this one that is the ribbon belly band. And it also is finished with all the stitching and the speckles and the journaling room on back, a tab on top. And that goes in there like that. So let's put this one, let's see, where did this one go? It may have went with this batch. I might have them mixed up, I can figure them out later, but that's how that will look on top of that one. Then we have this one that is the paper that I made my master board out of. And I used a strip of that with an angel and some check stub, a little label. And I have put a piece of eight and a half by 11 coffee stain copy paper inside for journaling. And we also have this tag started. So we need to finish this tag. So far, I have cut a piece of coffee, uh, no, of the master board. And I have put on a stencil, a poinsettia stencil with the embossing paste. Really like that, inked up around the edges inked up around the edges on the back. I put a stencil on it and my journaling lines. I just need to add a couple layers in the focal point. And the focal point for this one is gonna be this sweet little fawn laying beside all this greenery here. So we need to add a little bit of texture in the background. And I think I'm going to use this. This is not sheet music per se. It is a uh, piece of scrapbook paper. And I'm just going to tear that to size, ink up the edges, and I'm using the Distress Oxide Vintage Photo again, and that will hide, <laughs> yeah, it, it kind of hides our poinsettias in the background. Let's tear this down just a little bit more. That shows a little bit more of them. This still gives enough background on the back of that deer. I have chosen not to add any color to the poinsettias here and here. I want the white for the contrast and for it to stand out, so I'm leaving it. I also embossed, or not embossed, I 
use the stencil with the uh, fired brick ink and put on some red poinsettias too. And you can see those. So there's quite a bit of dimension here going on. And put it this here like that. And we have some labels and some ribbon to add to it. Let's see. A little bit of this yellow paper that I like so well. It just makes everything stand out, I think. And the yellow paper is the check stub. We'll put that down in there like that. Piece of ledger paper. Just scraps, guys. Just putting on the scraps right there. So let's get some lace or some cheesecloth. Let's go with cheesecloth. It's right here handy. And we'll just cut a piece of that and put that behind the two smaller layers. Put it right on top of the music paper here. And then glue everything down accordingly like that. And let's get a label and put on there. So I think we will go, I see a yellow and a green one floating around here. Where'd it go? There we go. Do we want this one or do we want this one? I'm gonna go with this one because it'll brighten things up even a little bit more. We'll ink up around the edges of that, just like that. Very, very happy with that. So let's glue this baby together. Looking for the art glitter glue. There it is, had it way over there. So I'm gonna go around all the edges. The edges are important to get sealed down. Sometimes I don't worry about them too badly if it's not gonna go in a pocket. If it's just like a panel on top of a page or something, I won't worry about it too much. There we go. Then the next step was the cheesecloth. So let's take some fabric fusion and just randomly spread around this paper like this. Not being very precise about it. And the cheesecloth will attach itself to that. Then we can start our layers. Let's see, the deer's going to go there. She is so cute. And let's put this up here. I'm going to use Fabric Fusion for this also. Which side do I want to show? That one or this one? I think this side. So let's ink up the other side here. And that's going to go right about in here. And this one also with the Fabric Fusion. And it's going to go right about down here. Then we'll put our little deer on next. Before I put that on, let's get some glue on the back of this so I can pick it up and slide it right under where I want to put it. Before I press it down, I want to put this in place. I was toying with the idea of having it like that, and that's what I want to do. A little bit over top of the deer image and a little bit under the deer image, just like that. Press that all down. And I will need to go around the outer edge and do some stitching. So I'll be right back as soon as I get that done. And there it is, it's finished. Journaling space on back, let's put it in here. And I think we'll put it on top, let's see. Let's put it on top of the paper and then let's try it out this way. I'm, we're gonna go like this because this with just the card is, is a lot, it's just a lot. This breaks it up and it kind of frames our little angel there. So I like it like that. The journal that it goes in is here. There we have our three belly bands, each just a little different from the other. I hope you enjoyed this process video and I hope that you are busy making yourself a journal and using some of the ideas that I will show you how to do in my journals. So thank you for watching and we shall see you again soon with another page in our Christmas journals. Have a great day guys, bye now.